Welcome back, double teamed fam. How are we doing today? We're stressed as fuck. We leave tomorrow. By the time this posts, we will probably be in Europe already. We leave tomorrow. I feel so behind. I have so much editing to do still. This episode still needs to be edited. <laughs> and our flight leaves tomorrow. Um, on top of other shit. Um, we're but- just going to make this short and sweet. Yeah, but I was going to say, we're posting this episode, and then you won't, we're, I've got a vanilla Sunday lined up, um, but then you probably won't see us for about a week, week and a half-ish, before I post the next episode. So, yeah, we're taking a little break while we're in Europe, we're going to enjoy ourselves and not focus on pod stuff. Uh, but we always take a little break in July, so it's okay. Yeah. This one's just a short break. Since we took another short break when we went to Dubai. But anyways. How's everyone doing? How are we? Yeah. What fun stories do we have from recent past? Oh, we, um, this is going to be kind of the uh, topic for today's episode anyways. I just feel like lately, you know, we've had a lot of like events, lifestyle related events. There was like, you know, a pool party and then for the fourth we um, got together at one of our friends' houses, you know, so it's like a big lifestyle group there. And we've been bringing around some of our vanilla friends to our lifestyle group. And to see how it goes. To see how it goes. Um, and the pool party specifically, Cami brought one friend who, we'll call him D. D. Yeah. Anyways, we'll call him D. And we told him going in, like, hey, it's just a pool party, but, you know, play can happen. It, you know, it might, it might not, blah, blah, blah. Uh, But we kind of just wanted to, like, dip his toe in to see how he would do, because we would like to invite him to other parties as well. And so it was, you know, he, I thought, did a great job. Yeah. And so between him and M, we've been bringing, you know, vanilla friends to a lot of lifestyle events and so well i mean i want to call them we like thought we'd little vanilla like they're curious or like why are you talking like that like what they're curious <laughs> okay sorry so, they're curious. that was so valley. i'm just saying curious okay that was so valley girl anyways no anyways they're they cu- are curious did I, am i saying curious wrong yeah you're saying it weird no it's just curious 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 yeah <laughs> I don't know. I hate this. Okay, I don't anyways. like the way you're pronouncing it. Anyways, Whatever. No, they were curious about <laughs> about <laughs> to stop saying that word. They were interested. They had some interests interest in, in the lifestyle. In the lifestyle, or have like at least heard of it. And that's what I was going to talk about. It's like you know, if you're going to introduce vanilla friends to lifestyle friends, there's a way to go about it. It's a slow progression. It's a slow progression because so when ready. I think about, for example, like. Like, we introduced, like, uh, we had a more vanilla friend group interact with a lot of our lifestyle friend group on the 4th. And had that it been, like... so interesting. It was. But had it been, like, our rave fam in our lifestyle fam coming together, that would have been really interesting. It's just different types of people. And that's what I'm saying. So, it's, it is, it does have to be a slow progression. You, you kind of have to, like, breadcrumb them in or, like, sprinkle them in. That's why with D... You know, Kimi invited him to the pool party because she was like, okay, cool. He'll be around everyone, but he won't feel the pressure of, like, a full-on play party, you know, about around a bunch of people that, like, he's never met before. Because at the end of the day, like, it is intimidating to bring someone to a play party for the first time and them not know anyone, not, you know, having ever experienced that, not really sure what's going to happen. Like, I think back to all the times that I've brought vanilla dudes to play parties and, like, I try to, like give them i'm never doing that again why oh with we'll call him s s yeah yeah no yeah but remember when i brought b he did great oh yeah he did but that was because i literally sat him down before we went over to the play party i did that with s too and i talked through him and i talked him through like so much shit at the end of it he was like i'm intimidated and scared to go i'm like no don't be the point of that was to just like me you know make you aware of like things that can happen or will happen just so that like you don't freak out and as they do but then he had a great time he did phenomenal we had a threesome he 
you know, ran into someone that he had hooked up with before. And, you know, he did great. But he, I but even then, when I brought him back then, like I had sprinkled it in. Like, I think I had asked him like a few times, told him a few stories. He showed some interest. And then finally, one day I was like, yo, do you want to come with me? And he was like, sure. And then he said he would go again. There. I pretty like with s i was so like okay this is like how would this is what's gonna happen like even you know but you know the thing even is even after me okay even at fourth of july we'll call him g i was telling g that he should come to a play party with me you know who this is you saw me with him oh okay <laughs> okay sorry anyway i forgot about that so at fourth of july this other guy that I was, you know, that I'm interested in, always had a crush on him. Anyways, I told him to come to a play party with me sometime. And I, you know, and then like a day or two later, we were texting about play parties and he was like had a bunch of questions and I was answering them. And as I was answering them, he was like, oh, okay. Like I feel much better about this. Like I want to go to one in the future. Like, you know, because of the way that I broke it down. And it's so funny. Like, the way that like people, people perceive yeah the way that people perceive sex parties when they haven't been to one because for example g was like what if someone comes up to me and i'm not interested and i'm like then you just say no <laughs> like and they're totally cool with that that's it yeah and that's what i'm saying I'm like i've been told no at sex parties before so have i i think it happened like twice i don't know believe but it or not yeah i and i've told people no before and, you know, even like the some of the play parties where it's like, you know, you have a consent talk or whatever, it's always stressed. If you don't want to play with someone, you just say no or not now. They the, People will get the point and they won't be offended. And if it, if it's if someone at a play party is you say no to and they get offended, then you know that that's probably one of their first times attending a sex party. And you should probably let the host know so that that person is either not invited again or, or kicked out, given a talk to. Yeah, and here's the thing about play parties is a lot of the times, like, see something, say something. Like, yeah. if there's any situation where you feel, where you feel like, oh, that was, like, interesting or not good, immediately tell the host or whoever's throwing the party because I can guarantee you they will solve that issue right then and there. It's like we talked about in that one episode. It's all about maintaining the safety and security of everyone. So, like, they take yeah. that seriously. But, yeah, another perception is, like, you know, people are like, oh, so do you just fuck everyone there? No. 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 I, and, that, and that's another thing. I was telling G, I was like, I maybe fuck at like 50% of the parties I attend. Yeah. The it, only the only times you'll really see me like truly like go at it is if I'm at a play party where like a lot of my friends are attending and I feel safe and comfy. Yeah. Not but that I, I don't feel safe and comfy at other ones. I do. I'm just saying like if it's a lot of strangers, I typically will like they take a very slow approach and I was explaining that to G as well I was like you know you don't have to play with anybody you can just go to watch and there is just like the party aspect of it where you're just hanging out with cool people there might just be other people having sex around you you know things like that so yeah but I think the key is if they get it, like, just, it's slow, slow progression, slow approach. Like, if you've got vanilla friends, first, make sure that they've expressed some sort of an interest in the lifestyle. Yeah, you're not, you don't. It reminds me of up. that one episode, uh, what was the, there was a show, I can't remember what it was, but basically the, the couple was just like, oh, come with us to a party, and the couple showed up, and then it was a sex party, and they were like, what the fuck? Yeah, you don't do that. No. no, you gotta, you gotta let them know. Like, oh, I went to a sex party. Like, tell them some stories. Tell them what, how, what you thought about it. Also, and then, and then, you know, see if they express interest. And if they do, then you can be like, oh, if you ever want to go, like, you can come with. And just then, have good discernment. I feel yeah. like you and I have really good discernment of like being able to tell, like, okay, this person we can definitely bring in. It'll be a good vibe. And th with that, let me say, yeah, that's on you too. Like, discern which friends are gonna feel uh, like are gonna do well in that environment and which one aren't. And let me give you some examples. If they are the jealous type and they're they have a lot of insecurities, they're probably not going to do very well at a sex party. If they, which you know, nothing wrong with that. We all have our issues, but at the end of the day, like you're walking around a ton of naked bodies. So, like, of course, like you kind of need to be pretty confident and secure in yourself. That's one thing about D and M both is they're both very like secure, confident people. 
Yeah. And then also like, you know, social people, people that are just like to have a good time, like to talk to people, um, you know, they do well in social settings. I think that you can gauge that pretty easily around like friends or strangers and whatnot and see, okay, so, you know, if I take them to this party, they may not know everyone, but they are pretty down to at least engage in some conversations and talk to people. They don't have to play, but if they're at least willing to like be social and friendly, like that's always good. And then, you know, if they're, if they're the shy type, like for example, tread like lightly with our rave friends, we know exactly who would be down for a play party and who wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Upon 100%. meeting new people, I can immediately almost tell if like they'd be down. You know, it was so funny, like at the fourth, at we were at a rooftop at our friends and then at one point, you know, we all went to the beach and it was like this huge beach party and I saw like some of my lifestyle friends go like mingle with their own vanilla friends and I like at one point I, w- I walk up to two of them and I was like, are these your vanilla friends? And she was like, yeah, and it was just so funny to me. Because, you know, and then, like, I met a few of them. They're very nice people. But, like, I could also just, like, tell, okay, yeah, these are very vanilla people. Yeah. And there's just nothing wrong with vanilla. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be. And that's what I that's what I was telling G2. I was like, it also just doesn't have to be your thing. You don't have to be into play parties. Yeah. Absolutely. It does kind of remind me last night we um, did a live podcast recording with the My Plus One podcast yeah and at laugh factory super at laugh factory fun. so fun uh i think their pod is great like they basically they bring on these like celebrity guests and they ask them to bring a plus one so it can be whoever um and they've had some like pretty good names like john stamos mm-hmm. um who was the other guy that i recognize but now i'm blanking on his name a bunch of really famous comedians um anyways and Anyway, we, we go, they asked us to do this show with them. They were like, hey, you know, can we interview you guys on it? It's just a quick 15 minutes. Blah, I got blah. so nervous because I'm like. Anyways, but we did it. And I just, you know, I am so used to like when we've done live shows with you guys, like you guys know us, you know, like you're down with what we talk about. And obviously, if you're showing up to our live shows, like you're at least, you know, even if you are vanilla, you at least are aware that like we go to play parties and we talk about sex. We talk about sex, all the like crazy weird things that we see at play parties and such, blah, blah, blah. Anyways. And so one of the first questions the they ask us at this show, they're like, well, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen at a play party? And I said, I won't, I don't know if it's the weirdest, but it is my favorite. And I told a story of the time that the guys all like ejaculated into the funnel and then the funnel was like in the girl's butt. Um, and then I think they like pulled it out of her butt and then also poured it over. Anyways, I don't remember that there was just a funnel and people coming into the funnel and the funnel was in her butt. Anyways, and as, as I was telling this story, like I look across the crowd and like half the faces are like, wow. And the other half are like, what the fuck? <laughs> And so, you know, you really got to know your crowd, guys. Yeah. (laughs) That's why I was nervous. Because, like, I knew that this would be, like, a very traditional, this would be a very traditional crowd. Or not traditional, but just, like. Vanilla. Mainstream vanillas, you know. (laughs) One of the comics, she was like, anytime you want to refer to a group of people that are outside of, like, what you're doing. And you want to, like, kind of, like, you know, make it a bit of a power move. She was like, just call them civilians. Like how the military calls c- people people civilians. outside of the military civilians. civilians. Yeah. So or yeah. like if you're in the industry, which by the way, if you someone says they're in the industry, it could mean typically they're in the service industry, which is like they're waiters or waitresses bartenders. or bartenders. Yeah. It could also mean you're in the porn industry, right? Is that what they use? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, but those are the two that refer to themselves as in the industry. Yeah. So and I feel for, like there should be a there, for, should, there should be a distinction. 100%. For lifestyle, it's vanillas. Yeah, vanillas versus, versus, versus lifestyle. For com- comedians, I guess it's. I like civilians. I just think it's funny. Civilians like, is funny. If you're a civilian and you want to go to a play party, anyways, you know, makes us it makes the party goer sound like the elite. But, but either way, I mean, shout out to my plus one pod. Go check out their show. I think they're hilarious. Vinny is now a good friend of ours, and yeah, I hope to see them grow. They have a great show. They're, he's also very funny. Yeah. Him and Tony. Yeah. So. They have a good dynamic. And Tony is, I guess, a killer editor, which I want to learn from. Him, yeah, so. absolutely. So his so. father was a famous pr- like pr- producer. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, I'm just really proud of D and M for like just doing so well, because I feel like in a lot of ways, like we kind of threw them into the wolves, and no, they've handled we took it. we them to our safe space. 
Yeah, I know. But, you know, like it can think about our lifestyle friends. It's a very uninhibited group. Everyone like upon meeting often, if they know it, like if you know each other, like you're making out, you know, there's like with a lot of them, you know, grab butts. yeah, grab butts and such like and they're not going to do anything without consent. But like, you know, I they already know they can grab my butt. Because I give them consent. Sometimes they they will even still ask. And I'm like, yo, you've been grabbing my ass for three years now. You don't have to ask anymore. Anyways. And so, like, you know, we're, 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 there's a lot of PDA. There's a lot of touching and consensual touching. Um, you know, there's a lot of love and a lot of um, yeah, like openness. Yeah. And so, and but to some people, that can be a lot to handle. And so... I'm really proud to see that, like, the friends that we've brought around recently have done really well with it. I agree. Yeah. And I always, yeah. So, like, if you're thinking about taking someone for the first time to a play party or to some, you know, lifestyle related scene, you know, ease them in. Ease them in. Give them a good, like, understanding of what it is that you're getting into. And, like, e- like just let them know, like, for example, a lot of times, like, if I am taking a guy that I'm, like, sort of, like, seeing or interested in and I'm taking them to a play party or I'm taking them around my lifestyle friends, I'll be like, hey, Jay will probably kiss me on the mouth upon meeting. That's a pretty normal thing to do. Or, like, same with, you know, other guys, like, in the group. And I'll let them know, like, if you're not comfortable with that, let me know now because then I'll kind of dodge it or whatever or let them know ahead of time. But, like, you know... Think about those kind of things too. If you're ever taking a vanilla friend to a play party or to some sort of lifestyle event and you're like, hey, do you have any questions? They don't have any. You can be like, that's great. Well, I have some prompts or some things that I want to talk about with you. Still give them some sort of talk, even if they're like, no, I don't have any questions or no, yeah, let's go. No, still do something. Still still give them some sort of a rundown, lowdown, whatever you want to do. No, I think it's actually... that's why like, for example, that's why... That's a great point because sometimes they don't know what questions to ask. Exactly. They really don't. So just tell them shit anyway, even if they say they don't have questions. That's why like BDSM does like munches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because that like eases in. Um, Because, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like it can be pretty intimidating and you want to have a a good start gives you a strong foundation, you know, for easing in. And that also reminds me of like, you know, say for, for example, you're you've been pretty lifestyle and you're introducing someone that has never been in the lifestyle. One example that comes to mind is um, there's one guy in the group, we'll call him G. He recently has started seeing this girl, we'll call her T, anyways, and she's never been around it. And he's like, let all of us know, like, hey, she's pretty new to this. And immediately, like, all of us that are already in it, knowing that she's like brand new to this and like he's trying to make sure that he takes her time with everything, like, you know, him and I used to kiss on the mouth upon seeing each other. Now we don't. Out of respect for her, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, like, I'm not going to, you know, make any moves on her or do anything, like, without, like, I I would just let her come to me. Like, I wouldn't push for anything, like, and so I I feel like, at least with the lifestyle group, a lot of people understand that, like, if someone is new, you got to kind of let them come to you first. And sure, you can ask things, you know, like, hey, would you be interested in this, da 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 But it's good to, like, ask a lot of questions along the way. But I think everyone's super respectful in that sense. That's another thing another another little tip here if you're bringing a new person into the group let all your lifestyle friends know hey so and so has never been to a play party or yeah. hey so and so is new to this scene yeah let them because know. then they know to proceed with caution which i mean people generally do anyway you know when if, if it's someone new coming into the mix you take your time getting to know them but just that extra level of like communication goes that way they know and they can kind of understand to maybe be a little bit more sensitive to their needs you know because otherwise they may act as you know as they normally would without knowing and then like either something gets said or something is done or whatever or like the other person's like maybe in that moment they were like oh i actually didn't like that you know so it it is yeah i mean like it's important to know that when it's someone's first play party yeah I believe D after having been to the pool party, which the pool party was just like very tame. Super tame. Yeah. I mean, I ended up having a threesome there, but for the most part, it was pretty tame. I didn't do shit. I just (laughs) was in the pool. (laughs) And um, I mean, I saw some other people kind of messing around, but like it was pretty tame for that group. And so I remember afterwards he was like, okay, he was like, that was kind of a tease. Now I'm ready for like a full on play party. 
Oh, and one last little bit of advice. If you are bringing someone into the play scene, they're new, they're a dude, they're wondering how their stamina is going to keep up at a play party. Totally get it. Very valid concern. Go ahead. Give them some joy mode. Yeah. Have them take a little scoop. Take the supplement. Yeah, have them take a little scoop before they get going, uh, before you, you know, walk into the party. And then that way, it's like pre-workout for sex. They'll be ready to go and and feeling like a young stallion. <laughs> <laughs> that's an inside joke. <laughs> um, yeah, like, it is an inside joke. No, but yes, it's true. Like, that's one thing you want to keep in mind, especially, you know, when you're going, if you're taking a guy to a play party for the first time they're going to be nervous there's going to be performance um not issues but just you know it's not going to be normal um so it's definitely good to have a product like joy mode which you know is a supplement that will stimulate flow to the area and you know get you nice and ready um so yeah, and of course we have a promo code. Go to usejoymode.com and use code double team and try joy mode out at your first play party. Yeah. So you know it was so funny. This didn't happen at the pool party. This was actually like a few nights ago. I don't know why this reminded me of that. Well, I was I was trying to take C of D wanted to go to that. I needed to take a plus one too. I went to a play party. It was a small one, 30 people, so Nikki didn't go. And I wanted to take someone, but no one was available because it was kind of a last minute invite, which is totally fine. But anyways, I get there and you guys will never believe who was there. A, I, I pull up and I knew that one of the guys that, I mean, I mean, he's sort of a play partner, a very casual partner. Anyways, I knew that he was going to be there. He was one of the guys that fucked me in the bounce house um, it during Halloween's play party. You know, that one play party where I went absolutely wild. Um, anyways, but you'll never guess who was at this, or Saturday's play party. Who? The other guy from the bounce house, the 21 year old. Oh, both of them were there? Yeah, I know. And it was so funny because I'll, I ran into, a, we'll, we'll call him SP. I ran into SP, which is a 26 year old from the bounce house. And I was like, oh my God, you'll never believe the other guy from the bounce house Halloween is here. And he's like, what? No, he's not. I would have noticed. I would have recognized him. And then we're walking and he like, and the other guy's walking our direction. And he was like, oh, wait. And the other guy looks, (laughs) they both like look over my head (laughs) and they're like, wait, are you? (laughs) And it was just such a funny moment. They're like, yeah, I thought I recognized you. Like super bro-y and I'm over here like do over let's go again we didn't which is fine um oh why didn't y'all um I honestly I like I I was taking some time to like it took me kind of a while to warm up Mm. mainly because like I'm in my luteal phase right now so that's typically not a time when I'm like super horny um and it so it takes me a lot a lot to warm up and um, I did end up playing with actually two guys. One guy who he and I, I mean, we've been friends for a while and we've like been on each other's radars, but it's never happened. But he and I were going at it for a little bit. And then I started getting cramps and I was like, oh my God, I'm, a, I'm about to start my freaking period. Like what the fuck? So I like go into the bathroom and I thought I was going to start my period. I didn't. Um, I was just cramping like I was. I was having like a low-key mental breakdown (laughs) in the bathroom because I thought like my cramps were actually really bad. Um, And then this one guy who I've definitely had my eye on for quite some time. um, And he was, I was like, I've never heard you talk that much. And he and I were having a full-blown conversation. And he was like, well, maybe I was just shy around you because like I always thought you were like super hot. And like I wanted to you know play with you but I was just being shy and I was like (laughs) I was like we wasted so much time because I have had a crush on you so anyways he and I had a very fun time and uh and that was a that was a fun little Saturday night but yeah it did take me a while to warm up so by the time it actually SP drove me home by the time I was ready to go he was like we live near each other he was like oh I'll take you home so we did not do a do-over with other bounce house guy i went to bed at like 10 o'clock that night it was glorious 
I think I went to bed at like one. I, um, yeah. Our friend, we had a little girls night. She came over. We had some dinner. Came, we went to the play party and then I went to bed because I got up at six in the morning. Um, I don't know if any of you, oh, well, no, because I was dating him before the pod. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, actually, it was right around the time. Okay, I don't know if any of you, oh, like, if you've been here since day one, there was... Um, literally day one. Yeah. Literally day one. There was a guy that I was seeing before we started the pod. He was a, a firefighter. And um, we dated for a few months. And then whenever I started my divorce, I was like, can't do this. Sorry. Bye. And he always, like, missed me and, you know, just... Yeah, he would text me a lot over the years and be like, I miss you. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. And I always kind of dodged him. And then randomly I saw him on Instagram the other day and I was like, wow, he's looking good. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and so I messaged him and we went and grabbed coffee. It went great. And uh, and then we decided to, uh, you know, he was getting off of work early morning and I was like, I'll come over and we'll have some fun. And uh, we did... I went to the so. plant store. Nikki was like, "Yay, more plants!" But like, I wasn't gonna be home. While oh wait, we no, no, working. I'm that. That was the other time. I'm talking about the, when I woke up at six in the morning to go over to his place. Oh right, right. What was? But it was just thing? so weird because like I haven't seen him in three years, and we literally picked up right where we left off. It was That's like so no nice time when you had have passed. That energy, though. Yeah, and he's vanilla. He is vanilla. So the, this recruiting vanilla process is gonna take some time. Yeah, and I've already like. Started and the preliminaries. Yes. And the preliminaries usually include like what would hypothetically, what would you be okay with and what wouldn't you be okay with, you know? And so, and then going from there and I'm like, okay, can we at least go to a play party and like, you know, would, would just play with each other, but not hook up with other people. And you're like, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, we'll see anyways. Uh, but that it's Don't just, we have a pool party coming up. You should invite him to that. We do? Yes. When? It's on the calendar. I'll show you. Oh, that one? Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave a TBD. We'll see. Okay. Anyways, but it has been fun reconnecting with him. He's got a phenomenal penis and body. He's 6'6". Six, six. You know I like my tall boys. Point being, you know, when you're converting <laughs> civilians... <laughs> I love you. Which also, her. like, and I hope the Jesus people don't come at us because y'all literally fucking go door to door. Yeah. And if y'all can convert people to freaking... Y'all don't even ask... Christianity. Immediately. Yeah, if y'all can convert people to Christianity, we can convert people to freaking... Non-monogamy. Non-monogamy, so yeah. I just wanted to make that distinction because I converting can kind of sound like a dirty word. <laughs> But at the end of the day, introducing, like, exposing, <laughs> introducing, <laughs> exposing sounds like it's bad. No, exposing someone to something just Exposure. means you're sure. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. But intru introducing, introducing is also fine. Yeah. Because I mean, it's yeah. not converting. We're giving them a choice, you know? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you're right. You know what? Have that you is heard a good about decision. our Lord and Savior sex party? <laughs> Oh, good times. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know that we'll be very active or engaged uh, during our Europe trip. Um, I will try to remember to post some stories just so y'all can see what we're up to. Both of our personal accounts are private now, so sorry. You made your personal private? Mm-hmm. Why? I was just kind of tired of random people that I had no idea. Like, I post on close friends all the time because I'm like, I want to post this, but, like, I really only want my friends to see it. You should go in and just delete everyone you don't know. I, I have, might actually do that. I have... But I, I have, like, 4,000... I mean, I don't have that many followers, but, like, I... I Luckily, every single time I post, it goes down, and I'm like, yes, people that don't give a shit about me are not following me anymore, and that's exactly what I want. But, essentially... Back when I was in my aviation career, I had a lot of people that would follow me because of like all the aviation stuff that I posted and I left it, you know, open so that people could see my aviation stuff. And if they, you know, were in my territory and they wanted to reach out about buying an airplane, they could reach out to me. So I left it open for that reason. Now I don't do that anymore. I put enough of my life on this podcast and on, you know, our pod social medias that I was like, I don't give a fuck. So I made it private. 
I have like over a thousand friend requests because if I comment on something from my personal account, guaranteed like 20 plus, and which, you know, like I said, guys, before, like I typically, my personal account is just for me and that's why I keep it private. So, but yeah, I, I think that's a great step for you. Boundaries. Yes, but actually that's a good idea. I should go through and just delete everyone. Maybe that's what I'll do on the flight to Europe if there's uh, Wi-Fi. Besides that, yep. What else do we have? Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been short and sweet. Um, yeah. We'll be back from Europe in two weeks, and then you'll see episodes from us again. And, oh, we are, like I said earlier, we are posting a Vanilla Sunday, first one on the 14th. Um, and then Cammie's will post on the 28th. Fun. Yeah. How exciting. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I'm so tired it. today. Yeah. Anyways, use condoms. Oh my God. You know what I said? Oh. When I was ending, you know, whenever we were leaving the stage at my plus one pod, I was like, try butt stuff. I don't know why the fuck I said that. <laughs> I honestly, that crowd needed to try butt stuff. No, yeah, absolutely. Don't forget to try butt stuff. It's that's what I'm saying. A few of them in there were a little too vanilla. Well, that's like okay. probably never tried anything beyond missionary sex. And yeah. so I was like, maybe Y'all, we, maybe we inspired. Them. I hope we did inspire them to like try some butt stuff or like you know, put some- a plug in and go run. Anyways, guys, wear condoms, try butt stuff. We'll see y'all soon. Well, y'all know how Europe is. Yeah, manifest a little European boo for me. I've never done that before. Oh, that could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had international sex. So. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I mean, don't get me Unless, wrong. Unless, well, I mean, when I was in Ireland with my ex fiance, but that's different. Don't get me wrong. I'm definitely hoping for some, you know, German eye candy to uh, connect with at Tomorrowland. Oh, and if you're going to Tomorrowland, I don't know if any of you are or if you have any friends that are, we will be there weekend one. Yes. Catch us. Probably at main stage. Uh, Dom Dalla, uh, Alesso, all of those. Yes, yes. Love you guys. Bye.